I hope you are doing very well. Welcome to another milestone with the Medical Ultrasound Academy. We are here to foster a culture of learning. Continuity of education is very critical to improve our daily practice. As practitioners, I believe that from different angles of the world, we meet different types of cases. So if you are going to share our cases, it will go a long way. Because some cases are not so common in certain geographical locations or in certain departments, but they can be found in other departments. So here, Without wasting much of our time, I'm going to discuss the cases of today. So today, we have got the two cases. We have got the epididymal head cyst, and we also have got a case of gynecomasia. So, you have found that, or you've seen that, most times, we will be very busy and it will be very difficult for us to type cases. We can't exhaust everything. So that's why I think that if we are going to discuss our cases here, it will go a long way because we can exhaust the case. So let me take you to the case today. So, this is a case that I came across at our department. So, what we have here, that's the left testicle. And then you can see around it, there's a little bit of free fluid there. It's not much though. But here, at the head of the epididymis, you can see a well-outlined cyst there and if you look inside the cyst you can see that it's clear it contains clear and echoic fluid there is no internal content and you can see that the walls of the cyst they are thin and very much well outlined so when you are doing your examination you must make an effort to visualize the pathology in two dimensions and then make sure that the lesion is examined using both color and power doppler fortunately for us here you can see that it's not a lesion it's just an extra testicular cyst in the head of the epididymis. So you can see here, I made a measurement of the cyst and then you can see the area around the cyst. There are no other lesions or no other masses uh, that you can see here. So, I've also made an effort to demonstrate the surrounding uh, structures. So, what we have here is the inguinal canal. And you can see the spermatic code here. On the color Doppler, you can see perfusion. This is the spermatic code. So, I tried to follow all the way. And then, there was no other abnormality so i didn't capture a lot of images because here we are just discussing a case on a case basis so i didn't want to waste a lot of time uh, putting more images which are not necessary so there is another lesion that looks like an epididymoid cyst that is called a spermatocyl, but the major distinction between 
a epididymal head cyst and a spermatocil is with the spermatocil you are going to find internal content inside the the cyst so here we expect to find in echogenic a content inside here if it's a spermatocil because the blockage will cause sperms to accumulate in there but because this is a clear anechoic uh, fluid so this is in keeping with just an epididymal head cyst so again when someone is having testicular pain it is very critical for you to demonstrate both testicles side by side like what we have here just to check the echo texture of the testicles i'm not here much talking about the technique uh, those who need the technique we have got our learning platform where we do much of the stuff but here we can just demonstrate that there are no masses in the testicles involved so in this case discussion i say that we don't just talk about a case and leave it there we also go on and talk about the typical or characteristic report that we make some people they've been asking me to send the model or typical reports so this is how we do it so if you follow you will also learn how to do uh, reporting so this is basically a request of a scrotal ultrasound so that's how i wrote the report so starting from here i have captured a bit of the history of the patient so this is a 37 year old male patient with erectile dysfunction low testosterone levels were also noted with a mass in the left hemiscrotum for a long period so it's very critical for you to capture history of the patient on the report if you know the history why is it so important because the referring clinician might not be the person to review the the patient next time so if they see this history it gives give them rich information to relate to you know that's a male at the same time you know that this patient is having erectile dysfunction and then there's low testosterone and then there's a mass already that is noted in the left uh, scrotum so it's very critical for you to know from the history that there's already a mass that we are already suspecting that this person is having a mass but what could it be that's what we were then looking for on ultrasound so if you know that there's already a mass on clinical palpation you already going to make an effort to or search for the mass if you don't read the history of the patient you'll be surprised that you miss the mass and then the referring clinician will say that there is a mass then you will be embarrassed when the mass is finally uh, seen so this is my me the way i do things i also thank the people who refer patients to us the courtesy the appreciation that they have the trust they have in us we also appreciate it because it's really an honor when fellow medical practitioners recognize your work and then refer patients to you so under the findings we comment it like this bilateral testicles are normal in size and echo texture they do have got comparable normal intratesticular perfusion on both sides so it's very critical again we're doing uh, ultrasound of the testicles to compare the perfusions in both sides as i say that i did not capture a lot of images this is just a discussion of the pathology i wanted to minimize our time and then the presentation must not be bulky so there is left epididymal head cyst well circumscribed anechoic the distal acoustic enhancement so you can see if you are going to describe the internal content that is anechoic already you are making a distinction or you are narrowing down the diagnosis so there's a, now a difference between 
an epididymal head cyst and a spermatocele. Already, you have got put aside the spermatocele and you go with the epididymal head cyst. So this uh, wedding is very critical in your report. So you also have to measure the, the, the cyst itself or the lesion that you see in question. So the cyst measures 21.4 by 14.1. Uh, millimeters so it's relatively small so contralateral epididymis is also intact so you take note of the uh, comparative side as well then no evidence of hydrosy or other isolated lesions was noted then the scrotal wall is also within normal limits so when this is done this is the body of the report that you make and then you go on then to talk about Findings are consistent with a left epididymal head cyst. No other scrotal lesions of concern were noted. So you see, this is how I sample my reports. I try to make them as simple and straightforward as possible. So we use a system to send our reports. That's why you are not seeing the date here. And then you also don't forget to put the dates of your examination. At the same time, the patient details like the name, the age, etc., must also be captured. So, if you are not using a system of packs to transfer your 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 images or the report, make sure to capture the name of the patient as well. So, this is the case uh, that I came across uh, at my department: a case of epididymal head cyst. So, we are going to talk on the second case of the day which is common but not so common to some and which is also at times very much confusing so now a gynecomasia is simply breast enlargement in boys or males so it can mimic a cancer in many ways on ultrasound and also clinically it might mimic the features, pubertal features of a, a female. So you can feel a palpable lump in the retro areola space. So this is what I found when I scanned this man who had this lesion. So you can see here is the retro areola space. So you can see this, ma this mass there. It's a hypoechoic is compared to the rest of the breast uh, tissue at the same time you can see that uh, the, the it's not well outlined so there are partial lobulations in there that you can see on the lesion and then distally you can see that uh, it's also casting shadows so this lesion or this mass has got all the hallmarks of A malignant lesion but from the history of the patient also knowing that this is a male patient ratio areola mass of this nature is consistent with what is called gyne commercia so if it was in females like this i would automatically have jumped to a malignant lesion then recommend a biopsy but in this case i went for Gynecomastia is the first line of diagnosis. Of course, yes, breast cancer can also take place in males. So with other symptoms and persistence of the lesion, doctors can also consider a cancer of the male breast as a differential. So again, I tried to put color on the lesion like that. And you can see that there was minimal to no perfusion that was noted on color Doppler as you can see in the retro areola space and then this is how gynecomasia present like at times it appears like a hypoechoic triangular uh, shared lesion with your posterior uh, 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 shadowing and at the same time it might also have 
some intra lesional perfusion, just like any other malignant transformation process. So, this is how I wrote my report. So, basically, this is a male brace ultrasound. Again, thank you for referral. If you don't know much of the history of the patient, or at times if the referring clinician does not have a nice handwriting, it might also be prudent or critical for you to leave the comment section or stop commenting on the history of the patient. Otherwise, you might give misleading history as well. So under the findings, no previous ultrasound for comparison. So when you're doing many or most examinations, it was also cr critical for you to follow the history or to check the history, uh, check the, the, the when the mass was noted and the dimensions, if it's growing, it's not, any other changes, any other architectural de deformations of the mass. So if there is history, you can relate everything to the history, but unfortunately in this case, there was no history to relate it to. So noted is a right retroareolar hypoechoclesion that is almost lobulated on the margins and measures 31.3 by 26.7 millimeters. So, you know, I was very lazy myself and I broke the rules there. A mass must be captured in three dimensions. So here I just took two measurements and then left it there because I was thinking that is gynecomasia. It might, the size, uh, the other dimension might not give any much significant meaning or change to the management of the patient. So I was lazy. But you are not supposed to be lazy. Capture all the relevant information and do the right thing. So the lesion abuts the deep surface of the nipple and then no cyst calcifications or intramammary uh, nodes were noted. So you don't end there when you see your, your pathology to say Eureka, you got it. You have to make an extra effort, check the rest of the breast and the axilla if there are other lesions or abnormalities that you can, and then you take note of them here. So the contralateral breast appear normal. So for me, at times, when everything is normal, instead of me writing lots of composition about the normality of the other breast, I just uh, say the contralateral uh, over, uh, uh, breast was just normal. That's me. So bilateral benign axillary lymph nodes were also noted. So you also have to comment on the axilla if there are other issues of concern like enlarged nodes, uh, lymphadenopathy, uh, nodes which are above one centimeter. So you can find that there will be small sub-centimeter nodes which are normal. Uh, that one is not a pathology if you pick those small tiny uh, nodes which are very normal part of the uh, lymphatic system. So under the comment section, findings are in keeping with the right retroareolar gynecomastia. So that's me. So that's how I have crafted it. And that's my line of thinking. So this is it uh, for the day. I was waiting to get some images from you. The only person who sent an image did so, send a video. And the video was not so clear, clear and I couldn't uh, uh, make an effort because we are going to upload images here. There's, I remember there's also another one which was sent. The resolution was a bit poor. The images were quite small, but it was again a case of uh, a dandy walker malformation. Uh, you saw that the vermis, uh, there was no, there was absent. And at the same time, this cystina magna was very much uh, dilated. So those are some of the cases of not uh, during our uh, session, which start in the morning every day. So I thank you so much for your time. I hope you are doing well. I appreciate your presence. I encourage you, let us keep learning. That's the only way to better our profession. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening.